very, very quiet. I'm hiding from alien creatures. Not being silent can also be deadly. Shh, follow me. We'll find a safe place to discuss the film A Quiet Place Part 2. Let's go. So after a year and three month absence, we're getting ready to go to the movie. So after a year and three months, we're finally getting ready to go to see a movie, A Quiet Place 2. So after I do this, I'll let you guys know. I'll hit a review, quick review on the channel. So let's go. Well, until the next one, that was pretty enjoyable to be back in the theater. Let's go back out into the real world again. Let's go. Welcome back to the Jeffman 316 Custom YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jeffman 316, your pop culture reporter. And welcome back to what's going to be a movie review video. In this video, I'm going to review the recently released feature film, A Quiet Place Part 2. As you can see from the footage that I tacked on at the beginning of this review, um, this was the first movie that I've been back to the theater to see this year. Um, actually, it's the first movie that I've seen in theater since the beginning of 2020. I think back in February 2020, my wife and I went to see The Invisible Man, and that was the last feature film that I saw in theaters, um, for obvious reasons. Um, but in this case, A Quiet Place 2 is definitely a film that's worth seeing in the real theater instead of waiting for it on home video later this year. The film was originally slated to come out in early 2020, but was delayed several times because of COVID. I'm so glad that I was able to finally check this feature film out in movie theaters. Um, it makes me feel like we're getting to back to a little bit of normalcy. Before I get into my feelings about the film though, can you please do me a few favors? Can you go ahead and uh, like the video, hit that thumbs up button, like it. Um, after you do that, may leave any comments below about my video, what you think of my review about the movie itself. Chat about, let's chat about the film if you want. Then after you do that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Got a lot of new subscribers lately. Appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me. Then there's one last thing you can do to help support me. You can uh, hit the notification bell and as soon as I post new videos, whether it be movie reviews or anything like that, anything pop culture related, because that's what we do here, you'll be the first to know. So now on to my review of the movie A Quiet Place Part 2. John Krasinski returns to direct this next chapter, and he also helped write the screenplay just like the original. The main stars include Emily Blunt, who returns as Evelyn Abbott, Millicent Simmons as Regan, is it Regan or Reagan? I'm going to say Regan Abbott, Noah Jupe as Marcus Abbott, and new to this series of films, Killian Murphy. He plays the friend of their family named Emmett. John Krasinski also returns as the family father. How does he return? Well, Lee Abbott, his character, um, has what you might call an extended cameo at the beginning of the film. It actually turns out to be an extended flashback sequence, like a prequel sequence. I'm not going to give away too much about that prequel, if that's what you want to call it, opening, but I'm, I'm glad to say that I really like the fact that they have added that to the beginning of the film. It helps establish just how the alien creatures arrive, and as well as how some of the characters figure out, maybe in an all-too-convenient way, uh, how the creatures use sound to stalk their victims. This is background information that we weren't provided directly in the first film. We had to learn that along the way with the rest of the characters, you know, as they went on their journey or their fight against the creatures. Um, it was great to also include this for any viewers who may have not seen the original in a while, who might not have seen it at all. Um, you at least know where the, where the movie starts and how the creatures got there. After this extended flashback intro, though, the story really begins right after the results of the first film. The family members that survived the original encounter are forced from their, you know, family farm and head out to find somewhere and someone to help them, somewhere to hide and eventually, I guess, live, which is uh, safe from the alien creatures. They encounter that family friend that I mentioned, Emmett, whose character was established in that flashback sequence. I'm not going to really spoil how they are thrust together as a group, but you probably can guess based on the scenes presented in the theatrical trailers if you've seen um, you've probably seen several over the last year. 
But based on the ending of the first film, um, and the footage that you saw from the trailers that I just mentioned, I personally knew that the family was going to be forced to the outside world. Uh, this did concern me, though, once I figured that out, about them going into the outside world in the sequel. Because having the first film in a small environment gave it sort of like a claustrophobic feel. And the, as the characters tried to find their way, um, you know, in and out, trying to hide from the creatures around their house, in their house, um, then eventually having to abandon their home in this movie and go out into the bigger world made me fearful that this would turn into just like another like humans versus aliens or actually, you know, maybe humans being hunted by aliens movie, kind of like maybe War of the Worlds. And that movie had worked because of the grand scale and the alien technology that they used. But these creatures are hunters. They're smaller. And it gave the original movie a really tense feel. Um, it provided a real creepy, scary um, atmosphere and, and some really scary moments. Um, it kind of made me feel like I was watching the original Alien movie. You know, that kind of closed in space. I will say that they did a good job of keeping the atmosphere and tension from the first film alive at least for a majority of this movie. Um, we see the family divided into two, what you want to call quote-unquote teams, that have two distinct stories. They both do center about uh, on the objective of survival, though. The mother, the son, the baby, they're forced to remain in hiding for reasons that I'm not going to go into into this review. But uh, Reagan and the Emmett, the family friend, they go outside and seek help from the surrounding areas while trying to figure out, you know, a, a method of dealing with the creatures on a large scale by utilizing the techniques that they, that Regan learned from the first film. Um, this allows you to experience the same tension you experienced from that first movie during certain parts, while also getting to see them interact with the outside world more and see how others are reacting to this creature invasion. So the tension is actually doubled up on this one because you got two different stories, two different groups, as they're both trying to survive in different ways during different subplots while dealing with the same alien creatures overall, though. Um, this method of storytelling really worked, and it was a great way to advance the story this time. I, I guess it was pretty creative, if you want to ask me. Um, Emily Blunt was great, as always, as the mother who would do anything to protect her children from the creatures, including sacrificing her own safety and well-being when she needed to to go out and seek things like uh, medicine, food, um, even shelter. Um, while this is obviously leads to not having a lot of dialogue in the movie, um, she says a lot. She wears a lot of emotion on her face. Run. You can really see the fear and determination in her eyes in certain scenes. Um, it makes her character just feel so believable. I really love Emily Blunt in most everything that I've ever seen her in, and I love her even more after watching her in this. I can't wait to see what type of movie she does next, because she goes from the gamut of like comedy to horror to everything in between. I will say that once you do find out about how um, Reagan and Emmett, uh, what they're going out to do, let's say, how they're going to attack the problem, the resolution of their part of the story is kind of predictable, but it's still enjoyable along the way. Um, the writers did a lot here with a little, considering we already really know how to best deal with, deal with the creatures and how to ultimately kill them based on the end of the movie. You can see how it'd be easy to get lost in your own self-pity and fear in a, in a tense situation like this, but that's exactly what happened to Emmett. Uh, Reagan brings him back down to earth a little bit, though, by the end of the film by teaching him that all is not lost in more ways than one. Um, I want to give kudos to the creators of this film but, and the sound designers specifically for how they set up the use of sound in this film. We already know that the character of Regan requires a hearing aid just to hear basic sounds around her. Um, when she doesn't have the hearing aid, whether it be that she lost it or she's taken it out on purpose, she can't hear anything at all. It's dead silence. They effectively use this aspect of her character throughout the story several times in several key scenes. These are scenes where she has to, uh, like I said, remove it herself, or she somebody forcibly removes it. I won't give away too much about that. But this is um, represented by total silence in the theater. Nothing is coming out in the speakers at all. It gives a really eerie feeling in the theater while you're watching it. Um, you're never going to know when the sound's going to start back up and which speaker it's going to come out of. Um, it actually created a couple jump scare moments as they went back and forth between moments of sound and silence. 
especially from her perspective and during tense situations. I usually hate jump scares in horror movies, but in this case, I'll actually admit I didn't mind it. Um, I'll even admit that I jumped a little in my seat, yeah, once. Yeah, let, yeah let's call it just once. There were some really great um, effective uses of sound um, in other areas. It occurred when characters were like really doing their best to try to be totally silent when there were creatures lurking around them. Um, the sound of the creature's movement and the growling sounds bounced around on the surround sound speakers like in the front and the back of me when I was in the theater. It really pulled me right into some of those tense moments and that on-screen tension. Um, I actually enjoyed each time the movie went silent just so I could see if I could figure out um, which direction the creature's noises were going to come from and where they would be coming from next on the screen. Um, it also helped there wasn't a lot of people in the theater. It was only a handful of people in there with us when we were watching it. So everything was like really quiet during a lot of this movie. Um, I don't even have an awesome sound system at home. So all these little nuances would have been missed without seeing this in the theater. I recommend seeing it, if nothing more, than for the creature sounds. It's awesome. The movie's not without its minor flaws. Like I said, most of the plot is very predictable, especially with Emmett and what they need to do to stop the creatures. But there's some bad judgment moments by the son, Marcus, which seem to just be there to force the next interaction between him, his mom, and the baby and those creatures. These moments seem like a little bit of lazy writing, but they, they are few and far between, so I'll easily forgive them this time. <laughs> Um, there are also some scenes where the CGI just doesn't look good at all. Um, I was able to easily distinguish what was real on the screen and what was obviously computer-generated creatures. Um, I wish more practical effects could have been used in this, maybe like, you know, like Alien or The Thing, that type of thing. I do worry that if I felt this way in the theater, how is it going to look when I watch it at home? Um, because in 4K, it'll probably look even worse. But oh well, um, those are minor nitpicks and not severe negatives, so we'll forgive it, like I said. So to wrap things up, you can obviously tell that I really do love this movie. A Quiet Place Part 2 might not be quite as good as the original, but it is still on fire as far as sequels go, and it's far above the usual hot garbage that Hollywood's been churning out as far as horror movies over the past few years. The plot does not stray too far from the path created by the first film, but that's a great thing. I really cared a lot about these characters after the first film, so much that I wanted to see more about how they were going to survive and how they were going to continue their struggle against these alien creatures. After this one, I now want to see even more about their story. I hear there's already a third one planned, and I'm all in for that. I'm ready for more. Let's go. In the meantime, if you're not able to get out to a theater to see this one, it is tentatively scheduled to be released on home video from 4K, Blu-ray, and DVD on July 27th. I really do recommend, though, that you try to check this film out as soon as you can in a real movie theater. Though, And do not wait for home video. Please do all you can to check this out. It's a real movie theater experience that you need to see for yourself. I do hope you enjoyed my review of this awesome movie. Please remember to do the normal YouTube stuff, like the video, comment on it, tell me about what you like, what you didn't like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And oh, by the way, don't forget to hit the notification bell and you'll be the first to know when I post new pop culture related videos because that's what we do here. So until next time, this is JeffMan316, your pop culture reporter, signing out saying, you guys be safe out there.